Instagram, y'all. <laughs> hey, Instagram. And I'm also live on Facebook. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I just wanted to come on here. Let me center myself here and share some nuggets with you. Um, I pulled uh, some of the cards from the cash flow game. And um, one of the things about cash flow, you're playing, it's just like almost like Monopoly. You roll the dice and you go to the different spots. So this um, card comes up and I'll give you a challenge. And one of the things I want to point out um, is that um, through my research, through my classes, I've decided that I'm a buy and hold type of girl as far as real estate and buying property. Um, but after playing the game and learning uh, strategies, um, there are some uh, properties that you give. The whole point of building wealth is that you're building up cash flow. You're building up your passive income to equal to or be greater than your expenses. And so um, in the game, you'll come across some deals. So the game really doesn't start until you buy assets that will generate cash flow and so one of the assets that you will buy is three bedroom two bath homes and so one of the key things i want to point out is that and i notice when i look back at my video i'll start saying something and then i'll jump to the next subject so let me finish the first thought i'm a buy and hold type of real estate investor but after playing a game and knowing that in order for me to get to my destination, which is my financial free uh, destination, is that I'll have to sell some of my assets to get uh, to the assets that will take me into uh, being financially free. So one of the assets is a three bedroom, two bath house. So um, every property, just keep this in mind, this is key, has a story. So it's just not offering me a three bedroom, two bath, but it's telling me, it's giving me some information here. I have some information about the house. A businessman needs cash to save his business and is liquidating this three bedroom, two bath house. It is currently occupied with a happy tenant. So once you find out, uh, just like with a business, you want to find out how to solve a problem. Just like real estate, you want to solve a problem. And so the problem is right now is that this person needs some money. Uh, to He's trying to uh, get rid of this house. And he's looking to uh, get out quick. And there's a happy tenant there. So the house is, the cost of the house is for 225000 the down payment is fourteen thousand, in, in, uh, and the cash flow is seven hundred and fifty dollars. So that's a that's a pretty decent uh, monthly cash flow. So every month you get seven hundred and fifty dollars. So when you do buy a property, there's always information provided to help you with your decision making. So you already know that it's possible that now in the game, it basically, you know, we have the cost. We know what we have to put down on there. We know what the cash flow is. And then our mortgage would be uh, $211,000. So we have some information up front. So in the real world, because this person is trying to liquidate, you can easily negotiate some things with this deal. But that's not my topic today. So we have this three bedroom home. So again, I'm trying to build up that cash flow. So I have $750. The game doesn't start. A building wealth does not start until you start getting assets that will put money into your pocket. So we have a happy tenant. Happy tenants. I'm telling you, I'll take a happy tenant any day. <laughs> They're paying $750. So for those that are part of the book club, we already know that one of the things is that you want to um, look at the property and create value. So we know that this person wants to sell. He needs, he needs cash uh, to save his business. So he 
you know, has a need. There's a problem that we can solve. So there is a possibility that you can negotiate the price lower and make some money there. Also, um, you have a happy tenant. So I wouldn't necessarily buy this property and then go up on the rent right away because this person is happy. You don't want to take a happy tenant and convert them to an a unhappy tenant. So you may be able to find other ways to increase value to that property. Does it have a garage? Can you put a carport? Um, and not to get too deep into that. So we want to find ways to, or we can decrease the debt. If you're in the book club, you would know that that's another option. After you buy it, um, how can you decrease uh, the debt in that property? Because you're going to pay taxes, you're going to pay insurance. Um, you know, that's all part of expenses. You, you know, you may have repairs. Um, so, but anyway, the whole point is that at some point, I may have to sell this property. And so here are three offers. I now own this property. I'm making $750. If I sell it, I have to pay off the loan and then lose my $750 per month for this uh, from this tenant. And we're trying to build the cash flow up. So you have to decide, is this a good time to sell this property and if I sell this property you want to replace it with something that's going to bring you a higher cash flow than what you're already receiving other than that there would be no point in doing that so I have uh, three buyers that is interested in my house they contacted me like hey um, I'm interested in purchasing your house so I have buyer number one. Buyer number one is offering me 5000 over the original cost of the house. So it was two twenty five. dollars so they're offering me 5000 Should I take that offer? I don't know. Should I? Buyer number two is offering me 20% of the cost of the house. And then I have buyer number three that's offering me 20000 So in the chat, and for those that are watching the replay, tell me which deal would you take or would you not take it at all? You do have that option as well. So option number one, not to sell it at all. Option number two, take 5000 over uh, the cost that I uh, got it at or... 20% or 20,000. So you let me know which deal is the best. And so these are the types of things that happens in the game. You have to look at your uh, portfolio, your uh, financial statement and decide, do I want to sell this property or not? Or do I want to keep it? And so you tell me which one of the three buyers would you take advantage of? I know which one I would take. Um, but back to my point at the beginning, I am a buy and hold. But like I said, since I've been playing the game every Sunday, um, which we're playing it today at 3 o'clock. Yes, on Mother's Day. You're welcome to join us. It's absolutely free. You want to go to the richdad.com website. And um, the board game, you look on the list of games because there's a lot of games going on. You look for Airs, H E I R S. And then it will ask you for a passcode. You put in one, two, three, four, and that will um, get you into our game. It plays up to six players. Once we get over six players, we have more than one board going at one time. But since playing the game, I've learned a valuable lesson that, yes, um, the only way that I would sell this, here I am building up, buying things that would give me assets, you know, increase my cash flow into my pocket each month. The only way that I would sell this is if I'm not already at my financial freedom number. Then I know that I need to look at my different assets that I have. Here's an opportunity that I can um, make some money off of what I put down and then buy something else. 
So you're constantly looking for deals. And, and if you don't already have a plan, you want to write out your plan. You want to write out that number that's going to get you to your financial freedom number. And then you fill in the different assets that will get you there. So this is one way of getting me there is to have a three bedroom, two bath house um, with the cash flow of seven fifty. So uh, with this, the fourteen, remember I put down fourteen thousand. So again, all of these numbers and uh, and uh, decisions, you know, all these numbers tie into my decision on whether or not I'm going to sell it. So yeah, I just wanted to jump on here today, wish you happy Mother's Day, and also um, just begin to um, open up your horizons of, uh, you know, different ways on how to accomplish your goal. You know, um, I can take, don't have to take, a, you know, if someone's wanting to buy my house, I don't have to sell it, I can keep my cash flow. But there comes a time where, okay, your next move would require a higher down payment and someone comes along and offers you that number that will give you that higher down payment to purchase your next property. So definitely when you're starting out, initially you may or may not put money down. My first property, I didn't have to put any money down. Um, but I have put down money on properties before. But... The whole gamut is that if I held it enough and got my 14000 back and I have infinite ROI, which is rate of on investment, um, then I no longer have any more money of my money in on the deal and I could walk away with a nice lump sum to finance my next deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, that's the beauty of buying real estate. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Enjoy your day. I hope that this was uh, helpful to you. Um, and again, let me know which deal will you take. I have a house that I paid $225,000. Uh, $225, I put $14,000 down on uh, as a down payment. The cash flow is $750. I have three buyers that's interested in my property because it's such a nice property and uh, somebody's interested in purchasing it. One person is offering me 5000 over the, uh, the price that I paid of the two twenty five. dollars Another person is offering me 20000 above uh, the purchase price and another person is offering me 20 uh, 20%. So let me know which prop, which deal would you take the deal, and if you would take a deal, which one of those three deals would you take? Bye for now.